Alright, so in this video, we're going to look at the branches of the thoracic aorta. So, by using this picture as a base, I think we'll be able to cover most of the branches supplying the structures of the thoracic cavity. One of the most important things you need to know is that the aorta starts at the heart, going out from the left ventricle as the aortic bulb, from where the coronary arteries leave, and then ascends, and then curves forming the aortic arch. And from the aortic arch, you're gonna see three major arteries going out. The left subclavian artery, the left common carotid artery, and the brachiocephalic trunk, which divides into the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery, which becomes the axillary artery once it passes the first rib. And now after the aortic arch, it becomes the thoracic aorta, which pierces the diaphragm through a hole called the aortic hiatus, becoming the abdominal aorta. So the diaphragm is really the landmark here between the thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta. So the thoracic aorta will curve, right? Starts off on the left side of the vertebrae and then ends up in the median line in front of the vertebrae. Now let's look into the side branches. The side branches of the thoracic aorta are divided into the visceral and the parietal branches. The visceral branches goes to the visceral organs, and the parietal branches goes to basically everything that's not the visceral organs. So now let's first start with the parietal branches. The parietal branches here are divided into two arterial groups. The first ones are the ten arteries running along the lower border of, of the ribs on each side. More specifically, they run along the lower border of the third rib to the twelfth rib. Um, and these are the posterior intercostal arteries. The upper two posterior intercostal arteries comes from the supreme intercostal artery, which remember comes from the costal cervical trunk of the subclavian artery. And all of these posterior intercostal arteries will connect with the internal thoracic artery, which also comes from the subclavian artery. The upper six posterior intercostal arteries will connect directly with the internal thoracic artery through the anterior intercostal arteries. And then, remember, the internal thoracic artery will split at the seventh rib into the um, superior epigastric artery, which meets up with the inferior epigastric artery, and the musculophrenic artery. And the musculophrenic artery is the one that gives off the lower six anterior intercostal arteries, connecting with the lower six posterior intercostal arteries. And through the posterior and the anterior intercostal arteries, the muscles between the ribs can be supplied by these. But the posterior intercostal arteries do have side branches, and each one of the posterior intercostal artery will give off the same side branch. But for simplicity, I'll only use one uh, I'll only show one artery of each side branch. So the first one is the collateral branch, originating from the uh, coastal angle and supplies the structures in its own intercoastal space and the skin. The next is the lateral cutaneous branch for the skin um, of the lateral and the anterior part of the trunk. Then there's the dorsal branch for the skin and the deep muscles of the back. And they also have some side branches supplying the spinal cord as well. And so remember, each posterior intercostal artery have these side branches, all right? So there's going to be one more, but this one's only for females, arising from the four to six posterior intercostal arteries to supply the mammary glands. And these are the lateral mammary arteries. So that's the posterior intercostal arteries. Just remember that the last posterior intercostal artery is called the subcostal artery. All right. The other parietal branch of the thoracic aorta is the superior phrenic artery that supplies the diaphragm. Now over to the visceral branches. There are four visceral branches from the thoracic aorta. First one is the bronchial branch, and they enter the lungs through the roots of, the, of each lung at the pulmonary helium and supply the lungs, the bronchi, and the visceral pleura with blood. Then there's the mediastinal branches, and these are many branches that supply many structures here in the posterior mediastinum, like the lymph nodes, fibers, and fatty tissue. Then there's the esophageal branch, supplying the esophagus. The upper part of the branch communicates with the esophageal branch of the inferior thyroid artery, which, remember, comes from the thyrocervical trunk of the subclavian artery. It also communicates with the left gastric artery at the lower part of the esophagus, the uh, abdominal part of the esophagus. 
The last branch is the pericardial branch, supplying the pericardium, together with the pericardial branch of the internal thoracic artery. So that's all I had for the thoracic aorta. I really hope you found this video useful to understand this topic. See you next time.